Hello, I'm Pater Nuez Makel, and this is Rappler Talk. For many of the world's freedom fighters, from Nino Aquino to Martin Luther King, their years in jail were not only a period of great injustice, but also a time of greater faith. For this Holy Week episode of Rappler Talk, we have with us former Senator Laila De Lima. In previous interviews, we've heard her talk about justice and politics, Marcos and Duterte. Today, we are meeting Laila De Lima, a woman of faith. We're going to talk about her nearly seven years in jail, how she faced the deepest questions of life, and why faith in God and the company of her cats helped her survive. Thank you for joining us in this Holy Week episode, Senator De Lima. It's my pleasure, Paterno. Can I call you Pat? Of course. It's my pleasure, and la- and especially when I learned that you know it's something different. That we'll talk about something different from all of the uh, subject matters that I've been through in various interviews. Thank you, Senator De Lima. Before we go to your life in jail, let's go back to August 27, 1959. That is your date of birth yes. in Iriga, Camarines Sur. How would you describe your life of faith growing up? Yeah, okay. I'm the eldest of four. My father and my mother are, are devout Catholics. So uh, I was immediately uh, exposed to the life of a Catholic that we uh, go to Mass every Sunday, that prayers were, were ta- told to us, and we were also told ab- about you know, how important it is to read the Bible. Although everything changed when I became an adult, a working adult, mm-hmm. in the sense that I didn't ha- have uh, that much time to really devote myself to that. But when I was a kid, I talaga namang with they 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 are traditional Catholics. Mm-hmm. So we go through all the the uh, usual rituals, for example, during Holy Week, mm-hmm. aside from the Sundays. And then uh, there are there are f- certain feasts that we have to really uh, uh, um, what commemorate. Mm-hmm. And I wa- I I uh, got my uh, primary and secondary education in a Catholic school. Mm-hmm. That's the only Catholic school that time in mm-hmm. Iriga City, mm-hmm. La Consolacion Academy, now La Consolacion College. So it's a Catholic school. So there were nuns there, and, and uh, we were taught the, the usual rituals and, and the, us, you know, the doctrines of the faith, of the Catholic faith, the basics, the fundamentals. And in the family, one of the sisters, a younger sister of my father, is a nun. Mm-hmm. An Augustinian nun, Sister Felicitas. She's still alive, although she's already, you know, she has a failing health. And we also have a, I have a cousin who is a, a priest, Father Mani. Now, Sister Felicitas, of course, she's a Catholic nun, and uh, she also played a great role in terms of mentoring us. The sec- we are the second generation of the big Dilemma clan. Ang dami naming magpipinsan. So those who grew up in Iriga City, we were so close, we're closely knit family, and we look up to our elders, and in my si daddy and all his brothers and sisters, there, there are 11 of them, all Catholics. And aside from that, we know that Bicol is one of the regions with the highest number or percentage of Catholics in the Philippines. The highest yes. A religious region, right? Yes, it is highly religious uh, region. If all, um, almost all families there, at least of the same faith as the, the Catholic faith, they they traditional Catholics, and uh, there's there's enough uh, education or or uh, guidance over their children. Mm-hmm. The, an average be called family, mm-hmm. and then in fact, well years ago. And there are many um, boys who go to the semin- seminaries. So they become seminarians in, in Bicol. Marami dun mga naging uh, seminarians. So uh, it is, in fact, the, the region with the highest uh, uh, number of uh, Catholic, uh, Catholics um, in the country. Who was the first person who taught you to pray? My father and my mother. Um, 
again, the basics, our Father, Hail Mary, glory to the Father, and to pray the Holy Rosary. We were taught to pray the Holy Rosary regularly, although we did not really uh, indulge in that. Only from time to time that we would pray the rosary. When we would be urged by, by our elders, let's pray the rosary, then we pray the rosary. But it's not really something that I had developed uh, firsthand. I mean, uh, early on um, in, in my childhood. But of course, the schools, there are occasions and there are days that we are required to pray the holy rosary along with the other students there. So did you consider yourself a very religious person at that time before you went to, uh, you were detained? No, not really. Well, I was taught the basics of, of a Catholic, of the Catholic faith. I know the basic prayers, but as to really uh, devoting more time, a lot of time uh, towards uh, you know, practicing faith, it's, it's only the usual with, with, with my cousins, with our family, but as a, as a person, I did not really develop that deep devotion to our faith when I was growing up. Although I am, I am a Catholic and I do pray. I did pray once in a while and I did believe in God firmly, categorically and passionately. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Trinity. I believe in the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. And and we were we were really told to to uh, to love and 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 have deep devotion to our Mama Mary mm -hmm. through the Holy Rosary. But again, it's not something that was done daily or very regularly. Once in a while, when required in school, when required by our elders. So on a scale of one to ten. How would you describe the intensity of your faith before uh, you were incarcerated? Maybe just five or six. Just maybe, maybe five or six. And there are times it could be less, especially when I became a professional already. I was busy with my private law practice and other endeavors. And especially when I entered public service, I became busier. And, and so let, let me say that it was not a priority. It was not a priority. It was not a priority. Only that I had, if only I had time, only when I have time, that I would really do my prayers and do Bible reading and pray the Holy Rosary, but not on a regular basis. Now going to church, I tried as much as possible to go to church every Sunday, the Sunday Mass, but there are times that I, I'm, I'm, I was able to skip it for some reason. I was out. I was outside of, 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 of uh, uh, I was out of town, and, and so that, it's not really that regular. So from five to six, before you were incarcerated, how did it change up? Still using that one to 10 scale, how would you describe the intensity of your faith when you were already in detention? It became so intense, you know? It's part, it was part of my strict daily routine that I had time, several times in the day that I would pray. When I wake up early morning at 4.30, I start praying. Noontime after lunch, I'll again pray. Evening, early evening after the Angelus and after recording on my daily journals because I would record my daily journals from day one of my incarceration every after the Angelus. And after recording my, the daily occurrences and the daily observations and reflections on my journal, I would resume my prayer and Bible reading. And you know, some of the books that were gifted to me my, by my visitors are spiritual books, devotional, devotional books. Every time I see something, something really good, something really a beautiful devotional book, I'll make it a point that I would really uh, attend to that and pray and, and, and read the devotional book on a very regular basis. Ilan na kong nakatapos ng mga devotional books because they're, they're simply so beautiful, inspirational and devotional. You know, not just to Jesus, but also various saints like St. Saint Francis, St. Saint Joseph, and several others. 
because these are devotional books. That schedule that you described, that is a schedule of a nun, of a religious sister. Exactly. And uh, as I always say, my incarceration brought some blessings. It's not all negative things. It's not all curse. Because it's, it is a curse. You would feel it is a curse if you are locked up in jail uh, when you did nothing wrong, when you were, you were falsely accused. Mm -hmm. So at first, you, it struck you as a curse. Is God punishing me? What exactly did I do? Eh, what is this? Is this a lesson for me? Now, uh, but then, blessings, a lot of blessings. Because the prayers, more time for prayers, more time for reflection. And also, after the angelus, before I resumed my usual prayers, I would, I would make some conversation with, with the Lord. I, I would imagine that he's just right in front of me and asking me questions and asking him questions, especially at first. Yung mga questions ko medyo diretso. Lord, bakit niyo to ginagawa? Ano ba, ano ba talaga kasalanan ko? And tell me, ano ba talaga? Uh, is this a test? Is this a punishment? Are you joking? I would, I would, I would. As a, nagbibiro lang ba kayo? Meron lang ba kayo gustong ipaano sa akin? So that's the type of conversation I would strike as if the good Lord is there. There are times ganun talaga. So um, blessing, because I had more time, you know, the solitude, the solace, make you dig deeper. You go into your inner self and try to do self-examination. I did a lot of self-examination. You know, I went through a lot of adversities. I had so much challenges, especially when I was in public service. And you know, I had, you know, you know I'm also sinful, just like anyone. But then I, I, uh, I, I did deep reflection, and maybe hindi ko dapat yung ginawa, and maybe I should have been stronger and fought some of my frailties. Because I had frailties in life, as a woman especially, and, and maybe, uh, and, and, and that taught me how to really question what did you do and why did you do it? And why made, what made you do it? Although, I, I can say that there was really no regrets when you go through certain experiences, even if this is not really a good one, but you always learn or try to learn from mistakes. You try to rise from falling. And, and that's exactly what I've been thinking in those almost seven years as part of my daily uh, reflections. Senator De Lima, in the Bible, Job got angry at God. Yeah. Did you also get angry at God? I did not get to that point that I would really, that I would be angry, the good Lord. But I would question him. Yung kung sa ano parang pinakita ko sa kanya na nagtatampo ako. You know, uh, Lord, bakit? You question, but not angry. Because I know that he's, you know, he's most powerful, he's most all-knowing, and he's all-merciful. There must be a reason why that was done to me. There must be a reason why the good Lord let it happen. That word is interesting, nagtatampo ako. Can you tell us more about that? Bakit tampo? Nagtatampo ako kasi I don't deserve to be in jail. Bakit niya pinabayaan na nangyari yun? And even before I got incarcerated, grabe na yung oppression sa akin in terms of those vicious attacks at my womanhood directed at my woman. You all know about the, the slut shaming that I got from my chief oppressor and his uh, minions, and then all those hate messages that I would be receiving in my phone before ako nakulong. Now, it's, it's somewhere unprintable words, and I had to get rid of my old phone because I would receive about more than 2,000 hate messages, especially when my cell phone number was exposed 
in that congressional during one of the members of the committee just exposed my number. So after, after doing that, right, of, you know, in a matter of seconds, I started receiving all those hate messages for days. And di ko nga nabilang. So I decided to uh, dispose of the SIM card of that uh, old uh, cell phone of mine. Now, uh, nagtatampo ako. Kasi nga, Lord, bakit tinayaan mo? Ano ba talaga? Um, is it, eto ba talaga ang dapat gawin sa akin para lang magkaroon ako ng, you know, uh, um, epiphany, moments of epiphany of where I did wrong and where what am I supposed to do next? Um, pero sinasabi ko rin nun, baka naman Lord talaga ang pinapahinga niyo na. You know, yung, yung pag hindi na ako nag, nagtatampo, I would say, I would ask, siguro pinapahinga mo lang ako. Pinapabreak mo lang ako because of my, you know, a very busy schedule as a, uh, as a public official, as a public figure. And, and salamat naman po if, 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 that's, if that's the uh, objective of all, of all this. But sana naman, hindi naman dapat matagal. Although I never doubted that someday I would be freed and vindicated. Ilang beses kayong nabitin eh, hindi ba? When you were there, mm -hmm. um, there would be hope that uh, you would be able to post bail and then suddenly, hindi pala. So, mm -hmm. you know, that roller coaster of emotions, how did you handle that? The prayers again. Because by that time, na developed na talaga ng malaki, my faith. The deepening of the faith was happening during those moments. So I decided not anymore to question uh, my situation. And ang naging attitude ko by that time is to let it all up to the good Lord. Thy will be done. That's always part of my prayer. Mga sagit na na yon ng aking uh, incarceration. At first, I, 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 I haven't thought of that, that I'll just say, thy will be done. Mm -hmm. But in the mid part of my incarceration, that's already the main theme, the core theme of my prayers. You know everything, you know what I feel, and you know exactly what happened, you know the truth, and the truth shall set me free. It's, it's there in, 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 the, in the Bible. But then because of that, thy will be done. And because of the deepened faith, I developed really that mindset. I will be freed someday. I bahala na kayo, Lord. Because that's exactly my prayer also when I was taken hostage in, in, in October of 2022. Bahala na kayo, Lord. Ano man ito? Did you have a favorite Bible verse? Or a favorite saint? No, I, I have lots of verses, Bible verses. I would write them sub, as on a separate uh, notes from my daily journal. I also have a notebook there where I jotted down uh, verses, biblical verses that I would love, or I loved, I appreciate. Although, you, I, you know, it's, it's difficult to cite any one of them now, but definitely... I have lots of them. Every, every uh, biblical verse that I would find beautiful, I would write them. Yeah. What about the saints? Uh, did you have a saint whom you first uh, learned of when you were incarcerated? Well, Saint Teresa, uh, the, the child the, Teresa, mm -hmm. because there were lots of devotional books about her. She's so innocent. And yet her devotion was complete, was selfless. And, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's the child in her that, that drawn me to her. And, 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 and uh, a few others, but you know, ano ko si Saint Teresa, yeah. the child Jesus. Yeah, uh, she was talking about the little way, right? Mm, like, little uh, way, exactly. The little way, um, yes. doing uh, 
small things with extraordinary love and care yes. and devotion. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, Senator Derima, when you were incarcerated, did you think of your enemies as well? Of course. Of course, especially my chief oppressor and uh, some of, her, of his subalterns. I, I, I initially in my few months or a few weeks, few weeks and few months, I was really enraged. It's both a feeling of disbelief and indignation. Disbelief, because I could not believe that was done to me. I thought that if he would not go to the extent of jailing me, I thought it would just be daily vilification and regular slut shaming and attacks, vicious attacks against my womanhood. Kala ko ganun lang, kasi there was a time na halos araw-araw eh, na talagang minumura ako at pinapahiya ako. Very insulting, offensive language. You, you all witnessed that. Mm -hmm. Now, ak akala ko hanggang dun lang. But I never thought that he would go to the extent of filing charges, arresting me, mm -hmm. and jailing me. So during the first few weeks, during the first uh, few months, I could not believe that it was happening to me. Mm -hmm. so, you know, somebody like me, I mean, uh, I'm a public figure, I'm a public official. I served in the Commission on Human Rights. I served in the DOJ faithfully. And I serve as a senator faithfully. I was faithful to my mandate in all of those offices. I may have committed mistakes, but not to the degree of, you know, that there was no misconduct as a public official. There was no, you know, I, I, I did steal money from the public coffers, and I never did injustice to anyone. I did not harm anyone. I just did my job, mm -hmm. including my investigation into uh, the involvement of the chief oppressor in the devout death squad mm -hmm. killings, because I was then the CHR uh, chairperson. And it was within our mandate to investigate the rising cases of extrajudicial killings in, 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 uh, in between 2008 to 2010. Mm -hmm. But I, I never harmed anyone. I never did injustice to anyone. So, galit ako dahil, nagalit ako talaga, wala nang kasalanan bilang public official. And then, uh, kung uh, kinamumungian niya ako, for whatever reason, you know, the, the vendetta, the personal and political vendetta, and exploiting my womanhood. You know, yung, yung, uh, mga inano nilang mga sa mga personal life ko. When they're the ones intruding into my personal, private life. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, but, but, you know, bakit ako? They, could, would they have done that to a male personality, to a male public servant? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the um, misogyny was used to a great effect against me, mm -hmm. which could not have worked against a male public personality. Because different strategies were, were made as against uh, male public officials like uh, Senator Sanitilianes, na kaaway din niya. You know, but not on the personal or private side of the male uh, public figure. Uh, Senator Dedima, before I proceed to my next question about President Duterte, I just noticed that you've mentioned several times um, uh, that bit about um, your being a woman, the frailties of a woman. woman. Yes. How do you relate to the Blessed Mother? Well, the Blessed Mother, again, I, I, I started being close to her again while in incarceration, although before, before I was incarcerated, I was a devotee of Our Lady of Manawag. I'm, I'm a quiet devotee of Our Lady of Peña Francia because I could not, I would not be going to Bicol, to Naga, mm -hmm. and join the other devotees there for the yearly uh, procession. Because mm -hmm. hindi yun yung napakalakihan ko. Mm -hmm. 
you know, uh, doon lang ako sa Iriga City noon. Hindi kami sinasama ng parents namin whenever pumupunta sila sa Our Lady of Peña Francia in, during the uh, procession. But when I became an, an adult and when I think I was in the DOJ still, I developed that devotion to Our Lady of Manawag by going there at her shrine in Manawag at least twice a month, every mm -hmm. other Sunday. Mm -hmm. Now, Mama Mary is always there for us, for me. Mama Mary understands women. As a woman, she understands women. As a woman, she empathizes with us, including sinful women. She is our mother. We are her children. So we, and she understands her children. And she prays for us, for our sins, for our frailties, for our shortcomings, and also for the betterment of our life. So what was your um, personal prayer to the Blessed Mother when you were incarcerated? What was the most memorable for you? Well, actually, and regular company pray, Our Lady of Manawag, because I have a big image there of Our Lady of Manawag. Every day, I, I, I pray to her and I would say, Mama Mary, tulungan niyo po akong makalaya. Because pag makalaya ako, I promise I'll visit you right away in your shrine in Manawag. So that was part of my daily or almost daily prayer. And I would always ask Mama Mary to, to protect my children and my grandchildren and, of course, my family. Senator De Lima, let me go back to that story about um, you insisting that you be allowed to go to the okay. Manawag Shrine first, uh, soon after you were released. Can you tell us about that story? Okay. So in fulfillment of my promise, a vow, that I would immediately visit Our Lady of Manawag at her shrine. So I told my staff that the next day before I leave for Bicol to visit my mom, I, I uh, would first go to Our Lady of Manawag. But my lawyers and some of my friends were uh, and uh, were preventing me, were dissuading me from doing it, and they were concerned about my security. They say, "Nakakalaya mo lang, you can never tell, baka target ka." So we have to, you have to be extra careful about your security. It's just your one day after your release. But I pleaded to them and even cried to them. Hindi pwede dahil pangako ko yan. Vow ko yan kay Mama Mary. And then they were telling, pwede ka naman na doon na lang sa Iriga. Pag uwi mo doon, punta ka rin kay Our Lady of Peña Francia. And then, so kahit wala na muna sa Pangasinan. At least in Bicol, I would be safer there, relatively. Uh, so sabi ko, no, no, because ang promise ko kay Our Lady of Manawag. But of course, I would also visit Our Lady of Peña Francia. I did. When I went home, when I went to Bicol, I, I tinamahan nga ako ni VP Lenny on that day because I was with her in Naga when, when, when uh, I visited Our Lady of uh, Peña Francia. So it's something that I could not really dispense with. Hindi ko mapapatawad siguro yung sarili ko if I did not fulfill my vow that I would visit her because I felt that it was part, it was part of my, the answered prayers. Would the pre-incarceration Laila de Lima expect that uh, you would be crying over something like a, a Marian shrine one day? No. It, it's, it's, it's just, it's just develop that, that deep longing because really the daily prayers helped a lot. That is the most powerful thing. Whatever you go through, any adversity that you go through in life, never forget to pray. Because prayers are your ultimate salvation or savior. Senator De Lima, segueing back to your chief oppressor now. Mm -hmm. Have you forgiven President Rodrigo Duterte? I'm sorry, I have not. That's something that I've been grappling with. I've been struggling. I, I, I told several 
people already that, and even in certain interviews, that uh, I have forgiven all others who were responsible for my persecution. Yung mga nagpagamit lang ng mga witnesses, nagpagamit ng mga handlers, ng mga witnesses, and, and uh, even uh, former secretary Vitaliano Aguirre. I f- I've forgiven him. You know, he was the chief enforcer of, for, of my oppression, of my persecution. But then I learned to forgive him. None of these people have asked for my forgiveness, but I have forgiven, forgiven them. Um, because that's one thing I've learned, that we must, the, the Lord tell us, the Bible tell us, we should forgive. And that revenge is not supposed to be ours. Give it up. Let the Lord do it for you. But the Lord is all forgiving. He would always forgive. But he would do things to uh, alleviate or to remedy certain situations. But Duterte, I'm sorry, but it's, it's difficult. It's, it's difficult. He made it all happen. He did it with such cruelty. Nibali na yung physical deprivation of my liberty, but the rest of what he did, the attacks against my womanhood. And then uh, um, all of a sudden, my reputation got shattered because many people actually believed Uh, all those lies about me. I don't know how many, but you know, there are, I have friends who would tell me that, alam mo, kahit mga kaopisina namin, they're supposed to be educated people. They, they believed. But you know, Medj, I call it a brilliant strategy on the part of Mr. Duterte. That he knew, I think he knew, that if they would focus only on the drug allegations, you know, about my Involvement, my alleged involvement in illegal drug trading. I think they knew, they know that uh, many would not believe that. They would, you know, they would. It's incredible of, 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 of my stature and of my background. Why should I be involved in illegal drug trading? But then again, in order for more people to believe or to doubt me and to doubt my innocence, they have to use the woman or the gender card by exploiting, you know, on, on you know, the labels such as an immoral, well, he, he called me immorals a few times, mm-hmm. and, and a, a woman of loose morals. And that's it. Because of that, because, you know, those people would now think, eh kasi, dyan sa ano niya, sa mga affair, affair na yan, na sinasabi ni Duterte, ay siguro totoo nga yan na nakiki ano na siya sa mga kahalubilo na siya sa mga drug lords na yan so that he can she could have money you know yun, yun ang parang that, that's the narrative mm-hmm. that's the narrative that I would I would uh, use certain people as my bag men mm-hmm. and, and so medyo me, nadagdagan yung mga naniwala especially of course they don't know me if only they would know me or they know me then they would not think that way. In your recent ANC interview, Senator De Lima, you mm-hmm. said that you are praying for the grace yes. to be able to forgive Mr. Duterte. Can you tell us more about that? That's true. Since I still find it difficult to forgive him at this point, in spite of the Lord's teaching, that we should learn to forgive and even to love our enemies. That's quite challenging. You know, it, it would take a lot of uh, struggle, really, to love your enemies. I still cannot. Uh, so, I ask for God's help. Give me the grace to learn and to finally forgive him. Even again, if he is not asking for my forgiveness. I, I, I always think that forgiveness can, it's, it's, it's more beautiful if it's a one-way thing, forgiveness. You know, you don't wait for others. You don't wait for 
the, the people who wronged you to be to, or to ask for forgiveness. You can easily extend your forgiveness. But again, I find it hard. I would be telling a lie. I would be a hypocrite if I say otherwise, if I say that I've learned to forgive Mr. Duterte. Why do you see the need to ask for the grace to be able to forgive him? You, could, you have the other option of just choosing to hate him all your life. Oh. I mean, uh, I can't do it You know, in, in my consciousness, on my own, I'm not sure if I can do it. On my own, maybe, the uh, hatred would be there for a lifetime, as you said. So I need his help. And I know that in time, in, pro, in, in, in due time, the good Lord would be able to give me that grace. I could feel it that he can give me that grace to forgive Mr. Duterte. I just really want him to uh, help me. Why do you want to be able to forgive him one day? Because that's what the scriptures tell us. And I would want to abide by that as a Catholic. Because I, I, my faith has been deepened. And therefore, the grace of forgiveness should also be bestowed in me. Um, and uh, understand why it all happened. Understand why... Uh, he did that to me, Mr. Duterte. Hopefully, well, one day. You Hopefully, will be able one to day. Do that. Yes. Um, what does that say about faith? Uh, I mean, um, faith as a journey. Faith as a journey is about strong, deep realization of one's humanity and one's relationship to good Lord. That everything that we have now, everything that we are now, the good and the bad things that happen in our lives, the adversities, the triumphs, the successes, the failures, there is one, there is one creator, and there is one who's making all that happen. And that is why it's important to have faith, faith that all of this has a reason na may, may, may dahilan kung bakit nangyayari yan sa buhay mo, whether it's good or bad. And uh, so it is through faith that you would, able to, you would be able to embrace what's happening in your life. I think um, what you said about forgiveness is very important because... Uh, um, people think that faith is always a finished product. It is not... No. It's, uh, it's, it's a living thing. It's a living feeling. It, it's, it's with you. And sometimes you feel that you are ready to forgive, but sometimes you don't feel that you are ready to forgive. And it is okay. Yes, yes. It is okay to be part of that journey. journey. It's a continuum. It is a continuum. You go through life that way. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, no um, journey is ever perfect. Exactly. No life is perfect. Life has a lot, has a lot of uh, things to learn from. Senator De Lima, just winding down, what, is your, what was your image of God when you were in the four corners of your detention facility? That God is my father, that God is is my friend, that God is my soulmate, that is there for me. Do you believe the saying that um, there are no accidents, only grace? Is that, it's a, is that something yes. true? Yes, that's true. In your true. experience? Yes. Um, it could not have just happened just like that. You know, there, it's a journey. Uh, God just wants you to go through that journey 
for some reason, God uh, wants you or put you in that, you know, to let you grow. It's part of growth as an individual and as a Christian. In that context, Senator De Lima, in my opinion, I think the presence of your cats <laughs> was not an accident. It was not. Because, you see, I used to hate cats. I'm a, I'm a dog lover. I have several dogs at home. They also hated cats. But then, nung nasa loob na ako, you know, all of these stray cats started coming to my compound. And I've learned to uh, appreciate them. I, I started feeding them. You know, iba-iba. More, more than 20 minsan, more than 30 minsan. Sometimes less than 20 because some would just leave. They won't come back anymore. And some would get sick and die. Stray cats. These are stray cats. Stray cats. Stray cats. Uh, and some were regulars and some were mainstays. And the mainstays became my favorite. Mainstays because they're right, they're right there, just there in my compound. And two or three of them would sleep in my room, in my quarters every night. Nagaagawan sila dun sa single bed namin. Uh, I have a single bed. And, and two or three of them would, would sleep with me. So I got attached to them. And, and so I was so lonely. So it was a mixed feelings. I was happy, of course, that finally freedom is here, although it's provisional freedom. But then again, especially when I was leaving already, physically leaving my compound, I was actually almost in tears because I, I was leaving my world for almost seven years, including the stray cats, because I could not bring them all. I could only bring five of them. And there would be no space anymore in, in, in our house, and especially that there are also dogs there. So uh, I, I just chose your favorites, my favorites, but it could have been more. But those that I left, I knew that they're the strong ones. The, the, like Tiger, one of them is Tiger. The name is Tiger. The name is Tiger. It's Did a big they have one. names? Yes, most of them have names. There were around 20 cats, right? Almost 20 cats. Almost 20 cats. Yung mga pinangalanan ko. Yung iba kasi, hindi naman sila masyadong regular. But yung mga regular, mga pinangalanan ko, some of them left already. There's Blackie, there's Ghost, there's Rob, there's uh, yung mga characters ng... Uh, Game of Thrones because you see while inside uh, we had movie viewing privilege every Saturday once a week 1 to, f one to 5 in the afternoon so natapos ko yung Game of Thrones natapos ko syempre yung Chloe natapos ko yung <laughs> and several other good uh, series and, and so some of the characters in, in uh, Game of Thrones pinangalanan ko sila and then meron ako pinangalanan na Avatar and Duchess, but Duchess left. He, he was, she's among the five that I went, uh, that I brought home. But first night pa lang umalis siya. Nanibago talaga, nanibago siguro. She never, she never came back, although I, I was, I was looking for her for a few days, but I never saw her again. That's Duchess. So there's just four. But then again, I just recently adopted two kittens who were, who were roaming around there. In, in the village, in the subdivision. So, anim na ngayon ang aking, ang aking alaga. So, you said in a, in, an, in a previous interview that the cats, each of the cats has a character. They do. Like human beings. They have a May mga mababait, may suplada, may uh, pasaway, may matapang, may behaved. Uh, and, and, um, one thing, one difference between cats and dogs is dogs easily recognize you, acknowledge you, and treat you as their principal, as their boss. But the cats, initially, it would be the other way around. in musila, they think you owe something to them, and it's your duty, mandatory duty, to take care of them. You know, so, but then, when you get attached to them, they change. They, they now recognize you as their, as their, me as, my, as their mother. 
Um, and you talk to them every I day. I talk to them. Especially during them. the pandemic, right? When there was a lockdown and no Total one can lockdown. visit you? Yeah, no one. Not even family, not even uh, spiritual advisors, not even uh, lawyers could visit for a few months. And, and so the only living being I would, I would uh, see would be the guards who would bring the food and the supplies just for a few minutes and they'd be gone. So the only living being that I would be with would, would, would be the cats. And so I would talk to them. I really talk to them. And they all know their respective names. Really? Kilala nila. Kung sino sila. So you talk to and God the, and the cats? Yes. Yes. It helps a lot, keeping my sanity intact. What was one of the more interesting discussions you had with your cats? Well, inaano ko, na rin, inaano ko rin sila na sabi ko, oh, while I'm here, you have to keep me happy. You have to keep me company. Na tayo-tayo lang. And then uh, I also scold yung mga pasaway. Talaga? I also scold them. Mm-hmm. And, and do some, you know, I, I, ikaw, masyado kang ano, hindi mo na kita papakainin. <laughs> mga, something like that. Uh, but I did talk to them. And even now, I, I talk to my my uh, cats at home. What are the names of the six cats you have now? Now, um, Avatar, Dal, Lily, Otto. I named it after that movie, a man named Otto. A man called Otto. <laughs> and then the new ones... A shogun mm-hmm. and Golda, little ones, kittens, mm-hmm. a male and female. You know, Senator Derima, whenever I hear the story about your cats, I remember the movie Cast Away. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you've watched that. Um, I uh, think it was Tom Hanks. Tom, Tom Hanks. It's Tom like some man called Otto. Yeah, Tom Hanks. And then, Cast Away uh, in an Island. Yeah, and mm-hmm. uh, the volleyball became mm-hmm. his friend. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, because he was alone and uh, he yeah. would talk to the ball. He was stranded, yeah. You, have, you, you know, the, the, another thing that, uh, which I call, I think, a blessing, is because you learn to appreciate little things in life, mund- seemingly mundane things that mm-hmm. you never did before. Mm-hmm. You know, even the rains, when it's raining, I would be at, my, at the door of my quarters and look and stare at the rains. You know, and then the, I, I was never a plantita, and then uh, I learned to be one, and dalo na nung pandemic because I had a I had a small garden there, so um, small blessings you learn to appreciate small blessings in life which you take for granted ordinarily. So going back to that quote I mentioned a while ago that there are no accidents in life, only grace. Why do you think did God send you these cats? Aside from, you know, keeping me company, but to develop more my humanity. It adds to one's humanity if you became or if you become attached to other living creatures like pets, pet dogs, pet cats. So it adds to my humanity. Animals add to our Our humanity. humanity. How does that happen? Can you explain how it happens? It's, it's, it's difficult to explain, but it's the feeling of, you know, we are the more blessed ones. Human beings are the more blessed ones. There are many other living creatures, all created by one, by one creator. Now, uh... All of them must have value in life. And, and, and you know, yung lalo kang nagiging understanding, patient, and understand little things. These are seemingly little things. But then, because of that, mas nakaka, you know, something in you would, would glow, would, would feel something special that you're able to commune and interact with other living creatures. And, and, and uh, because of the attachment, I became more human, more, more uh, well, understanding, kinder. When you were explaining, there was one word that popped in my head, 
compassion. Yes, compassion. compassion. More com you become more compassionate. That's definitely true. More compassionate towards others. My last question, Senator De Lima. Circling back to the Laila De Lima pre-incarceration, if you were to talk to that version of yourself, can you kindly explain why is faith important? Marami kang mga ambition sa buhay. You know, all of us have ambitions in life. You, of course, would want success in your life, and you would want as much as possible to avoid failures and avoid adversities and difficulties in life. But then again, dahil dumaan ka sa ganyang ordeal, you know, and, and one of the realizations is, alam ko, kung I'm talking to myself, alam ko na dati ka ng strong woman. You've always been a strong woman because you were raised as a strong one, especially by your parents, especially by your father. But then uh, you, you, you have this realization that you, you still have more capacity for strength or courage. You know, it's, 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 you, you only learn to realize that you have capacity for more endurance and more strength, and also your devotion to your causes. I, have my, I had my causes until now. These are my causes, human rights, justice, democracy, and the rule of law. That your capacity for your, to, to embrace your devotion to causes had become stronger because of what you went through. So you simply cannot quit. You cannot stop with championing your causes. What does it mean to be a woman of faith? A woman of faith is one who is in peace, at peace with herself. Thank you very much. Senator Laila De Lima, it was a very moving interview and I learned a lot and I hope our viewers learned a lot as well, especially for this Holy Week. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And please, everyone, just keep faith. We've been speaking to former Senator Laila De Lima. Thank you for joining us. For those who have comments or story ideas or any insights or reflections that you may have after this interview, please visit the Faith channel of the Rappler Communities app. I'm Paterno S. Makel. Thank you for joining us.